Greetings. This is Jed Schlackman, and I'm here to share with you today about the topic of addiction. This is something that is really kind of ubiquitous in our civilization. So some people may think that they don't have any type of addictive patterns in their life, but upon closer inspection, any of us can notice where we have some type of addictive tendency in our behavior. For some people, addictions can really consume or take over their life, especially addictions that involve something such as a chemical dependency, drug addictions, alcoholism, and even something like addiction to shopping or gambling, where it can really create a lot of havoc, a lot of destruction of your finances, your relationships, and other aspects of your life. Now, for those that are looking for help or assistance to heal or overcome an addiction, it's really important to look at this from a holistic perspective and especially to consider the spiritual level, the spiritual aspect of who we are and how that relates to any types of addictive behaviors that we have. When people engage in an addictive behavior or pattern, there's usually something desirable that they're getting from that experience. If we use the example of people that are addicted to different kinds of drugs, we'll see what effect those drugs would tend to have. In some cases it might be using a drug to get excitement or stimulation. So we have drugs that are considered to be stimulants or uppers, things that make people feel what they would call high. There are also drugs that are sedating, that can take away pain, that can slow down the mind, that can kind of put you to sleep almost in some way. And in that case, a person might be looking for relief or escape from something, from some type of suffering they're going through. So they really just want to kind of zone out and not face life and not face reality. With other types of addictive behaviors, we're creating those feelings through our own internal chemicals the hormones and neurotransmitters that our body itself is creating and regulating. Someone that's addictive to thrill-seeking type behaviors tends to be looking for that stimulation, that adrenaline rush. We can also be addicted to certain emotional states that we're in. A person who's feeling depressed a lot can get so accustomed to that that it becomes their comfort zone. So they may feel more comfortable being depressed than pushing themselves out of that depression into a more positive, uplifted emotional state. People can be addicted to anger and hostility. So when they're angry, they feel that rush of energy, perhaps some sense of empowerment. And to them, that feeling is desirable. It feels good or positive to them in some way. Thus, we can see that addictions can involve a variety of emotional factors, a variety of motivations. But at the foundation of that, we'll recognize that the person who gets stuck in an addictive pattern has difficulty just being balanced and centered within themselves. 
so there's some insecurity and stability, some lack of peace or contentment within that person, the inability to just be present, to just embrace the moment. A drug would be a type of addictive substance that takes you into a different state than the one that you're in. So if you're not content with whatever state you're in, you're using that chemical substance to take you temporarily into another state. Of course, we know that that effect can only be temporary. The effect of that drug is not going to last. So whether it's a substance that causes you to feel high, to feel stimulated or elated, or one that helps you zone out or tune out or sedate yourself, that effect won't last and you'll go back to whatever you may have been dealing with in your life before you try to escape from that state with a chemical substance. The same thing is relevant to other behavioral addictions. A person that goes shopping and spends a lot of money and gets material things to feel more positive about themselves is not going to be able to keep that up indefinitely. A person that wants to get thrills and goes gambling or goes into activities that are dangerous in some way, they're not going to keep that up indefinitely either. Whatever addictive behavior someone has can eventually cause very destructive effects in their life. So it's going to catch up with them sooner or later. And whatever unpleasant or difficult things they might have been feeling or experiencing before going into that addictive pattern, they now have an additional difficulty. They now have this addiction that's making them feel even worse about themselves, potentially. So if we're going through a difficult time and trying to use whatever addictive behavior to escape from that, we have to realize that we're probably just compounding our difficulties. We're adding another challenge, another, another unpleasant circumstance in our life. So if we're healing addictions, we not only have to break that behavioral pattern, but we also want to get to the roots of what's creating some discomfort, some distress, a lack of contentment or fulfillment in that person's life. As spiritual beings here having this human experience, there are certain things that we find we need to feel a sense of well-being. So different levels of needs that need to be met for us to feel in harmony with ourselves and in harmony with life itself. Some of those are basic survival needs. Some of them are social needs, the need to belong, to feel accepted, to have relationships with other people. We have needs to express ourselves in creative ways. That could be through arts, through writing, through drama, dance, whatever means you have to express your own uniqueness. We also have the need to contribute something meaningful to the world around us, to feel that we're a valuable part of the human society. And we have a need to feel some type of connection to something beyond ourselves. For many people, that's what they would define as God or a spiritual source. For others, it might be nature, humanity. So something 
that you feel is beyond yourself that you have a connection to a relationship with something that helps you have that sense of meaning and purpose in your life for people that are not having these different types of needs met in their life for people that have major wounds major traumas it's not uncommon for them to use an addiction to in a way self-medicate their pain or distress this may seem pleasant to them in the short run so for the short term they get some positive outcome by getting away from their pain through some type of addiction however in the long run we see that this just creates this loss of control in their life they become so attached to whatever that addiction is that it starts to consume them in healing people we want to help them recognize that they have this problem or issue in their life so in 12-step programs it's well known that one of the first things a person has to do is to acknowledge and own up to this addiction of course merely acknowledging it doesn't resolve the issue it gives you an opportunity to start to explore things to become more conscious, more self-aware and to begin to take the steps that you need to to reclaim your life to reclaim your emotional well-being and what you might call your sanity which is really about reclaiming balance and wholeness this can be a lifelong process it's something that we can really commit ourselves to knowing that it's not something that we would necessarily resolve in a day, a month, or a year but addiction can come upon us throughout our life no matter how much work, how much effort we've put into bettering ourselves different addictions can occur and they're not always the obvious ones people may find they've overcome substance addictions but then they might become a workaholic they might be addicted to pleasing other people there's many different ways that we can lapse or slip into these types of patterns in our life that are not healthy for us I find that it's important to have compassion for ourselves and for other people to recognize that we all as human beings in this world carry with us different patterns of insecurities different types of emotional traumas a variety of things that may make it difficult for us to stay balanced and maintain a healthy path in our life there are also many things, many circumstances in the world that can tempt us into those unhealthy patterns the human society that we live in in a sense is based upon addictive processes people are encouraged to overconsume in a variety of ways whether it's food, drinks, drugs different kinds of luxury items whatever things you're being told are important for you to consume or own in order to feel good about yourself there are people in our society who are addicted to their power, to their wealth or status if you observe the behavior of people who are very wealthy you'll often notice that they can't seem to be content 
with where they're at and they have this impulsive need to continue to acquire more and more. In my work as a therapist, I encourage people to consider different levels of reality, different aspects of their being that might need to be addressed in facing and overcoming a challenge that they're dealing with. With addictions, this involves often physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual levels. On the physical level, we can recognize that there are chemical, biological parts to this addictive process. When your physical body is chemically out of balance, that tends to lead you to do things that you feel are getting you into a more balanced or more desired state. Someone who lacks sleep, for example, may need to, to use something to help themselves relax and get rest. And if they haven't learned healthy ways to do that, they may be inclined to use sedative types of drugs that could actually become addictive. If a person is poorly nourished, if they don't have certain nutrients that their body needs, it'll be hard for their body to regulate itself and maintain a balance. So in that case, the person's nutrition could play a significant role. Also, when people consume different types of drugs, those drugs can deplete important nutrients from their body. So it's very common for people who are drug addicts, alcoholics, and so on, to have nutritional issues that need to be addressed. And of course, when your body has been subjected to those different types of drugs, they accumulate in the body, and the body builds up this toxicity that can disturb the various biological processes which are going on all the time. So the detoxification aspect can be important on the biological level, helping the body release those different chemicals so that it can restore its own natural chemical balance. Emotionally, people have many different experiences in their lives that have produced emotional pain, emotional distress of some kind. Those emotions can involve feelings of grief, of shame or guilt, feelings of anger and resentment, and of course also feelings of anxiety or fear. With these different types of emotions, our body is affected by that emotional energy. When that energy is activated, it will actually influence the energy patterns in the body and the resulting release and regulation of chemicals and hormones. Therefore, if we want to bring about balance, we wish to also work with the emotional level and help people release any le um, low vibrational emotions. Many people refer to them as negative emotions, although calling them negative emotions tends to neglect that they are essential emotions that we need to be able to feel as human beings to give us feedback about our life experience. So they serve a useful purpose in our lives. It's just when we start to accumulate them, to let them remain trapped within us, unexpressed and unreleased, that they tend to cause more problems. There's also the emotional 
excuse me, beyond the emotional level, there's also the mental level. And the mental level involves our thoughts and our beliefs. A person who has a very negative self-image or self-concept may easily get drawn into addictive patterns since they're not really feeling content within themselves. And in order to feel better, they tend to seek out some type of external form of stimulation or reinforcement. Our mind is very powerful. It affects every aspect of our life. And then coming to the deepest level, the spiritual level, that level actually will have an influence on all the other levels, either directly or indirectly. When we feel spiritually connected, when we feel that we are part of this infinite intelligence, this divine presence, that naturally brings us peace. It brings us a sense of well-being. When we're able to have faith and trust in that higher source or higher aspect of ourself, then we don't feel as inclined to look for external things to bring us a feeling of well-being. We could just be sitting calmly without doing anything, without being concerned about anything, and we feel perfectly fine. We feel as though creation is unfolding perfectly just as it is. There's nothing that we need to do, nothing we need to consume, nothing outside of ourself that's necessary for our inner peace or well-being. People that feel disconnected from that spiritual source or people who feel in some way that they're being judged or condemned, which often happens with certain types of religious beliefs, those individuals may attempt to deal with that distressing feeling or distressing thought or belief they have by using some form of escape or diversion. So that could be the foundation of the path that has led them into an addiction. Working on the spiritual level, we would use meditative practices, spiritual healing methods. So anything that helps calm our mind, that helps us tap into a deeper energy source, a deeper aspect of who we are. If we work with all these different levels, the physical, the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual, we have a better chance of helping someone overcome an addiction than if we only target one level. We might target the spiritual level for some individuals, but neglect their nutritional needs, and in that case, because their body is still so out of balance, their chemistry is still so out of whack, that even getting some more positive spiritual ideas or energy into them doesn't fully restore the balance on the physical level. And so physically, they're still being compelled to seek out something that's going to make them feel better. If we only deal with the physical level and we haven't addressed emotional traumas, we haven't addressed spiritual beliefs, then that person may temporarily feel better as their body is getting into balance due to the biological interventions. But then when something triggers them, something throws them into the psychological distress, that's going to throw their body back out of balance again. I hope that these ideas I've shared have given each of you 
some insights into how we can help overcome addictions or at least get to a point where we found some more balance, some more harmony in our lives and we may still deal with some of those issues to some extent in our life but they haven't taken over and taken control of us. For those of you who would like to explore different resources and additional information about a holistic approach to healing addictions, you may visit my website at www.phinsights.com That's P-H-I-N-S-I-G-H-T-S dot com and for now, I'd like to wish all of you a wonderful day. Namaste.